Hey, good afternoon everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have your evening update and some new information. It has pushed even further south, almost taken the exact path as Charlie did, but it's not going to be a major Cat 5 like Charlie was, but it will be powerful. Thank you all so much for sharing the information. Thank you for all my new subscribers. Thank you for alerting others to what has happened today because this is a big turning event. A lot of people didn't think it was going to take this path and now it's showing a little bit worse. It's going southern. So thank you so much for caring. The most important thing here is safety through this event. I can't stress that enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the update that we have for all the information and then I'm going to go bonk out and go nap for about four hours so we can live stream this event starting around 8 p.m. tonight is when I see some bands start really start moving in. Then it's going to be about 24 to maybe 36 hours of just staying as awake as long as I can and stream as much information as I can to keep you all updated as much as possible. So I do apologize if I don't get to all your comments on this video. I do appreciate every single one of them. Now, as we turn off the satellite, you can see right here with the radar, we already have a tornado warning going on already, and it is a nasty little cell moving. A lot of these tornado warnings that we are going to get, they're going to be fast, short-lived, and they're going to be in the upper right-hand quadrant of this system as it comes on land. So it's showing it to be somewhere around Sarasota. So remember, just because you're not getting this eye wall and all this storm surge that's going to be below this eye, the top side of this hurricane is going to be some serious winds as well. Now, it has curved, and that's why I wanted to update y'all seriously, because a lot of people told me, oh, we're going to go east and go to Orlando. All of Florida is going to be impacted. First, you got the landfall. Then you got below the landfall where the storm surge is going to be and some winds from the eye wall. Winds going all the way around, wrapping around the whole state. Then up here by southern Florida, Starting today, go further, further north tomorrow. And the next day, you got tornado threat, and it has curved. It went further south and then curved back right by Orlando. So the upper right-hand side of the system would be in y'all region looking like tomorrow. And then as it goes further by the east coast, actually one of the models is starting to hint that we get an over 100 miles per hour wind gusts over here as well as this system spins and puts onshore flooding for Georgia and South Carolina. Possible winds coming with it. They do have it as a tropical storm for y'all for the path. Now you already have tornado watches all in this pink for down here. You can see you already have some cells popping off. All these cells are going a little west on the wraparound. So it looks a little chaotic, but let's look at the wind so you know what to expect on the new path. And you can see where the hurricane winds. This pink is hurricane winds. So you got big strong hurricane winds coming in this way and all this blue all the way up to southern Georgia, all the way up past Charleston is expected tropical storm force winds with this as it comes by. But if you are in any of this pink all the way from Spring Hill to Sebring, all the way past Sarasota and Inglewood, y'all are in hurricane one force winds coming all the way across, even hurricane force wind gusts after the sustained winds calm down a little bit. This will remain a strong Cat 1 hurricane all the way a little east of Tampa. And it's going to be slow moving. So it's going to be a lot of storm surge, a lot of winds, and it's going to last for a long time because it's going to be moving very, very slow. Now I got this from space.com. Link is in the description. I thought it was pretty cool to see. This is our Hurricane Ian from space guys this is from the satellite view so you can see how big and broad this storm is link in the description to go check out the video big storm now this is a closer shot of high resolution rapid refresh high resolution rapid refresh is the best high resolution model there is guys matter of fact national hurricane center is picking up on the impacts from this weather model so as you watch it spin around get strong go over southern florida it makes that eastern turn a little further to the south and you see how all the bands wrap around so it will involve everybody as it goes around but as it goes towards jacksonville you can see right here is your 500 millibar vorticity and you can see that it does re-strengthen back a little bit on the higher levels of the storm so it don't completely die out 
as it goes towards eastern Florida, it keeps its strength. So that's going to bring a lot of the onshore flooding and winds for Georgia and South Carolina as it moves across. And this is a live look at Hurricane Ian now. And you can see how the thunderstorms is going all around the center of the eye. That's rapid intensification, especially when you see all this lightning. All this lightning that's popping up, that's letting you know that it is being, it's getting a lot of convection, a lot of lift. Rapid intensification is happening with this system at the moment. So there's another thing I want to point out to you. Sorry to flop back and forth real quick. That was live radar. This is the weather model. It is H triple R. You see how it's going all the way around. It's trying to stay nice and strong by 6 p.m. tonight. But if you watch it, the southern end is still getting that dry air all up into the core of that system. I'm not saying that it's going to stop the impacts because it's still going to be strong on the north side of this hurricane all the way around it. But the southern part of the eye could start to weaken as it gets closer towards landfall. You see how it cannot hold itself together. Looks like it finally tightens up at last second possibility. Now I am showing that not only this big band coming across bringing the tor tornado threat in front of this band, but the dry air is still getting involved in that, and that's why your rainfall totals are still lower. So don't let the lower rainfall totals fool you because this system is still coming straight across towards you. And you can see this on the 500 millibar relative humidity. That you get dry air all the way to the core, and you get this big dry pocket going by southern Florida, stopping it from getting a lot of heavy rainfall, especially towards Miami. It stops you all from getting some very serious rainfall amounts. But you see how you have that dry air in the core all the way through landfall. So according to high resolution rapid refresh, it's just like what we saw yesterday. It's going to come in fast and the brakes are going to hit. But don't take that to heart. National Hurricane Center is going with their impacts on the path, but not with the winds. They're still holding back on the winds. The ICON model, which is a very accurate model, is showing something else. Now the ICON model, it shows something a little different. It shows that it goes a little bit further to the north. Strong winds coming to Northport, Sarasota, very heavy rainfall. But all the storm surge will be coming towards Cape Coral. Bonita Springs will be getting some of that. And it will go towards Arcadia as it comes further on land with that surge. Just surging it all into the Northport Harbor. So just be aware, just because it's not showing Tampa no more, don't mean you're not getting effects. You still have a lot of storm surge coming but it looks like it's going a little further south now. And the winds really pick up for the ICON model. So in 24 hours, it's showing the winds are just starting to move in. You're getting 80 miles per hour wind gusts by Cape Coral. Within the next two days, it's going to change to 120 miles per hour winds, 115 wind gusts as this comes on land in between Sarasota getting 100, Bradenton getting 90, all the way to Cape Coral and Bonita Springs getting 100. Everybody else in between getting 120. And you can see the track going all the way across, but it don't pick up the same path as far as what HRRR is showing. HRRR is showing that this thing will go straight across with the high 80s, even the 90s. That's what this white represents is the 90s. So it shows it'll be 80s and 90s all the way across. Remember the links in the description so you can go check this out for your area. And it's showing that the winds do die out from getting that dry air in it. It is strong at 120, I believe, 120 miles per hour wind gusts, 124. And then all of a sudden it gets the brakes put on it. Venice gets some high winds, but everybody else is only getting 80s at that point. So high resolution rep refresh sees a little something else with this dry air and it could still hinder this storm. Although other models like the Icon is saying it's going to be a lot of high winds. You can see the difference with the rainfall just from the track. This is the Icon. This is a high resolution rapid refresh. So H triple R, 1124 for Sarasota. Pretty close, 15 for Orlando, 12. So you can see the path between the two of where this storm is predicted to rip across with all this heavy flooding. So according to the icon, it brings a lot of heavy flooding, especially to Sarasota and Southern, 12 to 14 inches. Tampa, you went down to seven inches, but now it's going towards Orlando, Daytona Beach, Palm Bay, St. Cloud. All y'all are gonna be looking at the heavy rainfall, and now it's bringing less towards Jacksonville, but the system does curve back up towards South Carolina, 
Georgia a little bit, so it will be some more later as it comes across. It's showing Sarasota also, Northport, Cape Coral, it's all Southern. It's not showing everything heavy for Tampa no more. Everything has moved further to the South, but it's showing that it will re-strengthen up. Remember I showed you that on a 500 millibar vorticity that it showed that it still got a ring around in the high altitudes. It's strengthened back up and you got a lot of rainfall. It's bringing two feet for Oak Hill, Orlando still getting a foot. It's bringing a big hot spot right over here on eastern Florida as it goes across and just starts spinning, putting all that onshore flooding from when it reaches the Atlantic Ocean. So here's your new storm surge map. You have going down Tampa. You're not five to ten feet, not expecting four to seven feet. You're still two to four feet over here by Swanee River, and then it raises up by Cedar Keys three to five feet. You're still one to three feet by Indian Pass. Two to four feet over here by South Carolina along the coast, three to five feet, and four to six feet by the coast of Georgia. Three to five feet for the northeast coast of Florida, and it goes down to one to three feet by the Patrick Air Force Base. And you still have it six to nine feet down here by southwestern Florida, but over here towards Bonita Beach, anywhere from 8 to 12 feet storm surge expected. So you can see the difference on the storm surge inundation map. A lot less for the Tampa area. I'm not saying you're not going to have big impacts. Please still prepare for big impacts. You still have inundation expected. It's just more like the 1 feet to the 3 feet. Now there is some areas that has orange and that's where you get up towards the 6 feet. But it's not over here by the hospital. Hospital is expected one to three feet of storm surge. But more southern of y'all, this is where the eye is going to hit in over here by Venice, just like Charlie was, but not as strong. But look at the large area of now of anywhere is up to 12 feet storm surge, up to 12 feet. Punta Gorda, just like Charlie, coming your way with all this storm surge Hopefully not the winds. It don't look like it's as strong as Charlie was, especially if that dry air gets in it. But look at that. So a new rainfall map according to National Weather Service. You still have two to four inches in all this dark green for the southeast, four to six inches in all of this yellow, and six to ten inches along the coast of South Carolina, including North Carolina by Wilmington, Georgia, all this orange in Florida. But look all this red now. All this red is 10 to 15 inches straight across and this big hot area of 15 to 20 inches is still sitting over here by Tampa. So please don't let your guard down even though the storm is moving further south. You still got major impacts coming all the way around. And you can see the area where the dry air goes into. You have a lot less rainfall expected. So here's the new watches and warnings according to National Hurricane Center. You still have the hurricane warning in the red. You still have the tropical storm warning and the hurricane watch up here in this blue by Cedar Keys. You still have the yellow for the tropical storm watch up here by the Panhandle of Florida, also by South Carolina and Georgia. But now the tropical storm watch has stretched all the way into Georgia, all east side, almost covering all of Florida, except right here for the southeastern side. You got a tropical storm watch. But they do have it as a major hurricane hit landfall, then a hurricane a little bit later, and consistently staying a tropical storm after that. Plus, let's not forget the tornadoes. You've seen you already have one now. We already had a couple. So your tornado threat for today is you have 2% in this green, but a big 5% in all of this brown. And your 2% is Tampa, Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Clearwater, Florida, and Lakeland, Florida. Your 5% is Miami, Florida, Hialeah, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Pembroke Pines, Florida, and Hollywood, Florida. For tomorrow, this is going to grow even more. You have 2% now for Southern Florida and Florida Keys, and you have this 2% for Northern Florida as this keeps going more and more north. But now you got this big 5% area for tomorrow for Wednesday. And your city's at risk, again, Miami, Florida in a 2%, Hialeah, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Pembroke Pines, Florida, and Hollywood, Florida. The 5% for Wednesday is Tampa, Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Cape Coral, Florida, and Port St. Lucie, Florida. And this will carry into Thursday as well as it strengthens and goes out. So you have a big 5% area chance for severe weather. It will be for tornadoes. This is for Thursday. 
and your cities at risk is Jacksonville, Florida, Tampa, Florida again, Orlando, Florida, Gainesville, Florida, and Spring Hill, Florida. So remember, all these tornadoes will be quick spin-ups, and they will form in the upper right corner, the upper right quadrant of this system. So if you have your eye right here, the upper right corner, if you're in that area as it swings around, good chance you could get tornadoes. So watch for the rain bands. It's going to be forming in front of those rain bands. But thank you so much, most of all, for your time. I do appreciate y'all visiting my channel again. And like I said, I'm apologizing ahead of time for not getting to the comments on this video. I've been in homeschool all day. I got a fourth grader and a fifth grader at home, and I just got finished with that. So after this, I got to go nap for about three hours, hopefully four, and then I'll get up and we're going to stream until this is over. And if you can't sleep, I can't sleep. I'm going to stay up with you. God bless you all. May you all be safe during this event. And remember, most of all, you're not alone. All of us are here with you. So if you have something you need to say, you have something you need help with, go to the comments. We have the best community I've ever seen on YouTube. Most helpful and most informative. Psalm 4. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you again for your time. Thank you again for getting the word out. You guys and ladies, y'all the ones that really saved a lot of lives and forming people to get out there and do what they must do. So thank you for your help. God bless you. All glory does go to God. Now and forever. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I will see you for the live stream.